Hi everyone. Well, um, today I am going to, I'm set up to um, share with you what I call my spaghetti bouillonnaise sauce. I love bouillonnaise sauce. It's just a real enriched, robust, thick meat sauce. And um, I love it over orchiette pasta, which is also known as lamb's ears. I think I'm saying it right, orchiette. And um, they're just little round dumplings. I will insert a little photo of a finished product. And today I'm going to serve my bouillonnaise over regular spaghetti. I love the um, rich, robust flavor that bouillonnaise brings. It's different than a, an actual red sauce or um, marinara. So it's really meaty and flavorful. And uh, you know, you can tweak this with anything you like. Now, a lot of bouillonnaise sauce calls for cream. And I like that a little splash of cream in it. Um, but I don't have any cream today, so I'm just gonna do without. And um, I'm just gonna kind of step you through how I make mine and uh, the ingredients that I use. And it normally calls for red wine, but what I have is Marsala, and it's more of a sweet wine, and I love the flavor of Marsala, so I'm gonna make it work today for this sauce. So my full ingredients I wanna share with you I'm missing the main, mm, it's right here. Um, so I have about a pound and a half of um, good ground chuck, and it's about 90% lean. And I am going to saute it first and then drain the fat off because I do want this sauce to be, you know, very lean. Um, next ingredient is um, a this is a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and this happens to be with roasted garlic and sea salt because I love it really garlicky and um, in this plate here I have a couple of bay leaves I have fresh chopped garlic I'm a little bit short on the garlic and because we like it garlicky I'm going to add some minced garlic I have about, it's about a teaspoon and a half-ish of um, uh, oregano. I have a little carrot here that I have chopped up. It was about a two inch regular carrot and I've finally chopped it. That adds some sweetness and takes away the bitterness from the tomatoes if they happen to be bitter. And I'm using about what would be the equivalent to one medium-sized onion, but I'm using purple. Now, I'm sure the onion police would be out arguing you shouldn't use purple onion in this hot dish and whatever. I like purple onion, so I like it raw in salads. I like it cooked and sauteed. Um, I'm not really going for a caramelized onion. I'm going more for a sweaty onion, so. Um, that's the main ingredients and then I'm going to use a couple teaspoons of this is called better than bouillon it's roasted beef base I think that really enriches um, the t flavors of the tomatoes and just kind of marries everything really well together if you don't want to use this you can use a bouillon you can use beef um, broth but that's what I'm using and of course my own salt and pepper and that is um, kosher salt that I'm using and um, I will top it off with about a good fourth to a half a cup of grated shredded um, Parmesan cheese now I think what I have available is Parmesan Reggiano maybe it's the balsamic flavor and then I like to just take some good cherries and these are the cher cherubs and they're on um, nature sweet cherubs and they're really good they're really sweet and I like to just grab a handful cut them up 
season them with a little bit of um, olive oil, salt and pepper, and then just kind of put it on top once I serve my pasta. I just like that fresh tomato flavor. And I'm gonna start off some good olive oil. And this is really good olive oil, first pressed. It has a beautiful color to it. Um, anything that looks too pale um, or is not first pressed, um, you want extra virgin, that's what I'm trying to say, extra virgin olive oil. So um, we're gonna start off with a couple of tablespoons of this and we're gonna get our meat browning and then I'll come back. I think you can pretty much see everything here. I put my pan on the burner and I have it over uh, just a medium heat and there's just kind of a rule of thumb, hot pan, cold oil, food won't stick. It's an old saying that I learned years and years ago, actually from the frugal gourmet. Yeah. And I've always kind of stuck with it because it does work. We're going to use about two tablespoons. Now I eyeball things. I don't measure a whole lot. I've been making this for a long time, so I can kind of look at it and say one and two. Maybe a little more. But if you're more comfortable with measuring, then go ahead and do that. And then I just give it a real quick zhuzh and let it come up to a little bit of heat. My pan was pretty heated, my spoon, and I'm going to just drop my meat in the pan. Be careful, you don't want to splash yourself. I'm going to lift and let you see it's still in the pan and I'm just stirring it around. I like to do what's called um, season layers. Um, so I layer my seasoning. So I will layer salt and pepper at this stage and just pinches of um, a little bit of onion salt. That's just my preference. I kind of do that for most meats that I'm browning. And you know, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go slip into my apron. And I'll show you this. This is kind of my apron dress. It covers your clothes really nicely. And uh, this is something that my mom picked up when she took a trip to Italy several years ago and uh, I have tried to get online I've tried to go through Etsy um, to kind of see if I could get somebody to make a few more of these they're great they cover your entire body it's kind of cute um, it's comfortable and so then you can keep the grease and oil and I'm a messy cook a messy 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 cook my husband will attest to that, trust me. So, get a little hot, but it does the trick. So, the meat's browning, and at this point, it's still in the process of browning. And I'm just going to, at this point, add pinches, because we're layer seasoning in layers. Just pinches, I like to do a little bit of pepper a little bit of salt and granulated onion. I did put it in one of my own jars and labeled it. And I will, ooh, whoa. Yeah, that's a good reason why you don't necessarily want to pour over your food because sometimes too much comes out. So I'm just pinching a little bit. Not a whole lot. I'm just going to continue to stir this up and wait until it's good and brown. Um, I'm going to show you as best as I can uh, that this was really lean ground beef, so I don't want um, it to be, you know, I don't want to be grease inside. I can just raise this a little, you can see hardly any. But I am gonna go ahead and drain it and then I will um, come back and add the rest of the ingredients. This is a little trick that I do. I just take a bowl and a 
small colander. And what I do is I will drain the meat into the colander. Um, I don't want to dump any grease down the drain. And that would be a big bad no-no. I'll show you what's in the pan. And I have another bowl here that I'm just going to go ahead and pour this meat in. into the bowl before I put it back into the pan. plus the little bit that I got out of the bowl. So what I'm going to do is pour that hot grease into my bowl. I will wait for it to cool, chill, and then I'll just kind of scoop it out with paper, towel, and dispose of it. So back into the same pan. What I'm going to do next is, and this is where I add just a smidge for a better flavor of olive oil roll it around in there and I'm going to go ahead and add my chopped up garlic. You see my pan's pretty hot. I'm scraping down all the little ground beef tidbits. Oh, just that aroma alone smells so good. Let me turn this burner up a little bit and I'm adding my onions. And I'm going to stir those around for a little bit and just let them sweat together. The key here is keep everything moving so you can just sweat your onions and um, get your garlic nice and sauteed and don't burn it because there's nothing worse than burnt garlic. And it's doing really well. And at this point, I'm going to add those carrots, and that's for sweetening. If you don't like carrots or you don't want to add carrots, um, you can just eliminate them. Also, you can add sugar at the end because that will sweeten up your tomato base that you're using. You can just sweat them out a little bit more, not too much longer, just a little. I'm going to add my couple of tablespoons of tomato paste. I do it at this point. I like for it to um, kind of just start doing its flavoring there. And you know, it smells really garlicky. So I think the actual garlic cloves that I had are kind of going to be sufficient that I don't have to add any other um, garlic flavoring. So now you have to keep moving that tomato paste around. Like I said, I. I took mine from the freezer, so it's kind of in a solid chunk, which, you know, you don't want that to burn. I have done that, but I'm uh, getting it all incorporated. I'm going to add my cooked ground beef and let that blend in with those uh, onions and garlic and carrots and tomato paste. And if you ever open a can of tomato paste and you only need a tablespoon or two, just stick the rest on some foil or like I like to use uh, glad wrap and stick it in the freezer. And when you need it, you have it. Okay, fresh tomatoes. Here you go. This is what it looks like all incorporated together. It's a really pretty um, deep color. And one last, not one last time, but one layer of seasoning and a little more pepper and just teeny bit of salt, not a whole lot because cheese is going to add quite a bit of salt. Stir that, give it a nice stir. Oh, it just, it already looks and smells so good. Mm-mm-mm. Now, I'm going to add my bay leaves. 
and I have two, and my oregano. And I'll just add anything else that was hanging around that plate. That'll be great. Stir it around. Oh. Cover those bay leaves so they can really don't break them, just cover them up and let them do their thing because uh, you definitely want to remove that before you serve it. And then I'm going to go ahead and add at this point, I want two, no, yes, I want two teaspoons. So, you know, the old saying, measure twice, cut once, same thing. You can always add, but you can't take it out. So I'm doing about two teaspoons. Now remember, bouillon is also very um, salty. Just adds such great flavor. I'm gonna incorporate that into this sauce. And you may think I'm crazy, but little Lee and Perrin. Yes, on this spaghetti. Just add it. If you don't like it, you don't have to. Now, I'm going to add about, I'm going to start out with maybe a quarter of a cup of Marsala. Because Marsala is pretty um, sweet wine. It's a very sweet wine. And the one I got is definitely says sweet right on it. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to give it a good stir. Oh, it just, it smells so good. So good. I'm heavy on the pepper. Um, I just think it just flavors ground beef beautifully. So this is when I add another layer of seasoning. And this is to taste, so do whatever it is you want to do for your bouillonnaise. But if you could just get just a slight whiff of this cooking, you'd love it. I am going to I'll also tell you, sometimes I just eyeball what it looks like to me and how I think I want it to look. And I also think that olive oil is a key ingredient. And sometimes I just, not that I want it to be greasy, but I'll just add, that was maybe a scant half a teaspoon more and really stir it around. And then I'm going to put the lid on this and I'm just gonna let all those flavors just kind of marry together over a low heat and I'll kind of semi-cover it, and um, then I will serve this over today. It will be spaghetti, and I'll show that to you, and also how I use the um, pasta water to also, if it's too thick, and sometimes that pasta water just adds a really great flavor to your um, bouillonnaise. So that's it. That's how simple and easy it is, guys. And if you love the flavor of oregano, add more. If you feel like it needs more garlic, by all means, add more. I mean, you can never have too much garlic. And the basis is just crushed tomatoes. So I'll show you how I end up serving it in the end. And like I said, I usually normally always will add that little maybe fourth of a cup to um, this base of cream it just lightens the color up a little bit and just kind of gives it a little sweet uh, flavoring but right now i'm going to get the lid to this pan put it on there leave it half on half off and i'm just going to let this marry probably for at least um a good 30 minutes yep at least a good 30 minutes and i think that'll be um ready for me to plate it up and show you so guys, I put the lid on and I'm just leaving it half on, half off. Actually, it's not the right lid for that pan, but <clears throat> I 
just think I've misplaced it for a minute. I probably have it stored up above. So um, I'm gonna turn, I can hear it bubbling. I'm gonna turn it down a little because I don't wanna scorch it. And I went ahead and added a little bit more uh, black pepper to it, to our liking. And I noticed that this particular can, I don't know if it's the sea salt in it or what, but it just was a little more bitter than I wanted. So I did add about a tablespoon of sugar that I sprinkled over. And I think that's gonna be perfect because um, I'm not using cream this time. And cream really does kind of cut on the acidity and gives it that nice um, glossy look and just really does sweeten it up because I mean, after all, it is cream. So I'm going to just let all these flavors just marry together in that pan and have a good old time put those um, carrots down so that all of the good um, sweetness can come out of those so then y'all know how to boil water and cook pasta okie dokie i want to show you how robust and beautiful this sauce looks and really what you're doing right now is you're just trying to get the essence of all that great um, beef flavor and the bouillon and the wine and, you know, get those carrots cooked down. So that's the point where we're at now. And I like to put the lid on just semi. And then I will give it um, another taste test to see if I need to add any more seasoning. And then, of course, when it's done, I'm going to add, um, I would say, a good, uh, for that amount, half a cup. But if you really love cheese, to three-fourths of a cup. But I also like to put it on top um, after I serve the sauce. So I'll probably use about hmm, at least a half a cup in the sauce and then I'll sprinkle a little bit on top and this happens to be um, the cheese I got from our local um, public store and it is called balsamic bella vitano cheese there it is balsamic bella vitano the black pepper cheese by the same brand it, it's just so flavorful so you can add some black pepper on top of that cheese too to give it that little bit of kick one last thing that I will do is I will take um, those cherub tomatoes that I showed you earlier and I'll cut up, oh, I would say um, just a good serving amount of them. I'll just cut them in half and then I'll season them with some sea salt, pepper, olive oil, mix them around and don't ask me why, I just love putting it on top of my spaghetti and bouillonnaise and my cheese. It's so good. It's just like you're getting so much in every single bite. So it's really good. So I hope you'll try this recipe. It is so simple. It doesn't take a lot of ingredients and it doesn't take a lot of time. Um, it's just something easy, but it's different than spaghetti sauce. It's different than marinara sauce. It's bouillonnaise, and it's really a just a great blend of flavors and um, tastes really good. So I'll be back in a minute and I'll show you the plate. And of course, me taking a bite. Okay guys, this is how difficult this is. Chopped up tomatoes, a little drizzle of OOO, extra virgin olive oil, a pinch of black pepper, I love black pepper, and a healthy pinch of salt. And I just kind of mix it all around. I don't have my spoon here. Yes, I do. And this is what I will put on top of my bouillonnaise spaghetti and along and just kind of spread it all over. And uh, I just like that blend of cooked tomatoes and robust sauce and fresh cut up tomatoes. And uh, so simple, so easy, so good. Can't wait to show you the finale. Stay tuned. It's not the finale yet, but I just want to show you right there. I've removed the lid and I want it to even get a little bit thicker. So I 
pretty much base how long it takes on not so much the time but the tenderness of like the carrots and what I can taste of the garlic and onion and just that nice thickness that nice robust um, look and flavor so I need it to get just a bit thicker I'll be back though Okay guys, I am going to remove, oh I took my garbage bowl, emptied it, my bay leaves and I know I put two in there and there's the second one and I'm going to show you, ooh, don't want to get rid of that beautiful meat sauce it's thickened the way it should you see how when I part it it's not watery it's not you know um, it's very meat sauce robust thick and it's delicious so at this point um, I'm just having I have the heat on very very low I have my pasta coming to a very good boil and I am going to add a good heaping of salt yes lots of salt even a little bit more because that's the secret to good pasta is making sure you get it good and seasoned and I'm going to add I'm going to show you sometimes when I get down to a little bit less than that maybe about that much more maybe a quarter inch more grated I go ahead and I put the whole chunk right in the freezer in a uh, plastic freezer bag and then I'll just add it to soups any kind of stock I'm making or sauce so at this point guys I'm going to grab this delicious cheese and I have sprinkled a little bit of black pepper on it and I'm going to save some for on top and I'm just gonna stir it all around and it's hot enough that uh, the meat sauce is uh, going to melt it and you can see um, just how pretty the color is and oh it still smells like heaven so get ready I'm about ready to plate it okay guys it's all done and I'm going to show it to you in just a second. It is so good. I've already taken my first bite. Sorry, I just couldn't wait. It's delicious. Key ingredients, good Parmesan cheese, good um, olive oil. Make that the best. Season it to your tastes and, um, you know, follow the recipe as far as the amounts because that's how you're going to get a nice robust flavor and um, don't be afraid to get in the kitchen and try something new even if you've never had this before it's so delicious so let me turn this around so you can see what I'm talking about here it is guys it's just so beautiful and here's those um, kind of um, olive oil, salt and peppered tomatoes, fresh that I put on top. Over here I just have a little marinade going on of olives and mushrooms and peppers that I, I actually bought at uh, my local grocery store. And here goes this big gorgeous bite of robust spaghetti bouillonnaise. Goes. Mm. It's just a little bit different than your normal um, pasta sauce, but it's so good. <laughs> 